My most successful clients don't break communication. That is a consistent thing that I have observed and seen. My most successful clients do not break content, contact. They don't break contact. They will either keep me informed via email. They might, they might spread out the consistency of communication. Maybe instead of initially they were calling me every other month or every month. And then it went to like every quarter. And then it went to two times a year, three times a year, and then maybe one or two times a year, right? But they still kept in contact in contact with me all the way through. They're the most successful clients. For the people that break content, contact, I keep saying content, the people that break contact with me will experience other voices coming at them, right? Other influences attacking your brain, whether positive or negative. So something, something had to have happened where the client felt they got to a point, they had a really good rhythm going on with Velocity Banking, they got two debt tools, now they got more credit, they're like, yeah, 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 right? They're like, oh yeah, things are going, things are going, yeah, boom, chunking, Velocity Banking, I know how this feels, like you just start moving, right? You start, things start going fast, you know? Wife is saying things to you she wasn't saying 10, 20 years ago, right? Now she's saying it again, and then vice versa, husband's talking to wife in a different way you guys are just vibing you know something reignited i don't know things are happening start breaking communication look what happens they decided to invest first rule they broke they violated a principle of leverage with the sixty thousand dollar heloc and the twenty five thousand dollar debt tool they leveraged as of today 2023 they owe twenty four thousand forty seven dollars and eighty six cents on their secured personal line of credit on their HELOC, they owe 58425 I would say you're over leveraged at this point. Way past my 66% rule. Agreed? Everyone in here, pretty sure. Put in the comments. Agreed. We're over leveraged. Not pretty. Okay. So naturally what happens, the, the side effect, the symptom of over leveraging is you will immediately have an impact on cash flow. The moment your cash flow starts to go down, stress levels increase all of a sudden the same pretty things wife was saying now she's not saying it no more vice versa husband's not saying those pretty things he was saying to wife so now there's stress now there's tension in the bed we don't want that there's tension in the household kids are yelling there's arguments now we're feeding into our impulses that we were practicing before we met Denzel, which was wasting, wasting money, waste management, right? We forgot that principle. That's another symptom. So notice how there's a, this trickle effect. You violate one law and you get three diseases that come in that you initially eliminated or, or repelled for a period of time. So we got violated from our cash flow because we broke the rule of leveraging, right? So we broke that rule. Now we're seeing it in our cash flow. Stress levels are, are higher because now we're like, <gasps> and then they come back to me on a phone call like this, all down. Yeah, this is what happened. I can just, I can like feel it through the phone. Even though I don't see them, it's like, I'm. this is what I'm imagining. I'm just, her shoulders are down, wife's in the other room. You know, she's like, go talk to him, right? Go talk to him. See what the heck he wants to, you know, how is he going to get us out of this problem? And now I have to be a magician, right? Now I got to do magic with the numbers. So here's my magic, right? And by the way, complete joke there. There's no magic here. It's just numbers, okay? So now we have to mitigate, fix the problem, right? So just painted you that full picture here. What's going on? We're in an over leveraged position. How are we going to use velocity banking to put us back into a healthy position to move forward. This is what I wanted. A little racer. All right. Painted the picture. Now let's go to work. Let's go to work. We got nearly maxed out line of credit, PLOC, nearly maxed out HELOC. Currently, they were doing velocity banking on their HELOC, right? And then they stopped. So they, so it's come to a full stop because they got nearly maxed out. So you, it's really hard to do velocity banking when you're nearly maxed out on the line. You have to create space so that you don't get in a situation where you're like dumping your paycheck in, but then you gotta take more out and then all of a sudden the, the money's gone. It's like not there, right? So we need to create that space. That's our first issue, first problem. We need to create space. But now the question is, which debt tool do I use, okay? Do I use the HELOC at 10.5%? When they initially got it, it wasn't at 10.5, it was below eight. 
So it's jumped. Their PLOC has remained at 4%. One of the things that I do like about rev uh, unsecured and secured personal revolving lines of credits is they tend to maintain the interest rate. It doesn't fluctuate as quickly as a HELOC does, especially if the HELOC is not fixed or fixed for a period of time. What I've noticed is with personal lines of credit, my clients that obtained them in 2019, 2020, 2021, their, uh, their rates have roughly either been the same or maybe only gone up one or two points, but not a huge jump. I don't know what forever, whatever reason that is, um, because a PLOC is a variable line of credit, it's a variable rate. So it does change. But for whatever reason, um, this is across many banks for people that have personal lines of credit. And you can go ahead and testify and comment as well. If you do have a PLOC, your rate really hasn't changed dramatically like people's HELOCs have or credit cards for that matter. So this client, their rate is still the same 4%, right? And I verified that with them. So when I'm in a bind like this and I want to implement velocity banking, I need to put my money where it's going to, to provide the most strength for me. What I mean by that is where can I park my income where majority of that income will show up in principle for me to be able to use again. You're not going to experience that at 10.5% on $58,000 owed. You're just not, especially with low cash flow, 538. It's going to be difficult. So my recommendation was that they use their PLOC at 4%. By doing velocity banking, we can bring four and cut it in half less than two in net costs. So if we run the math, 24,000 times 4%, you're gonna get 961.91. That's the total amount of interest in a year. You divide that by 365, we're paying about $2.63 a day, right? Monthly payment interest only is 80 bucks. Now with every PLOC I've ever seen, I've, I've never seen interest only payments on personal lines of credit. I've never really seen that only with HELOCs. You get that option with interest only payments, could be wrong. But for majority of PLOCs, it's usually principal and interest payment required. Usually 1.5 or, or say 2% of the balance is what they usually always charge. So in this case, their actual payment is about 480 bucks, I believe, based on the 24,000 oats. So if I so if I go 24,047.86 times 2%, that's roughly their monthly payment, about 480 bucks, okay, is what they're currently paying. All right, so we're only looking at about $80 in interest that we can recapture on that 480, but majority of the 480 is already principal, hence the low rate. So we're not getting, you know, beat up. So we got the 480 plus the 53808 of velocity banking. And in this particular case, we have a tax refund coming in in the next 30, 60 days. We're in May of 2023. So it's already been filed and everything. We should probably see it in May, June, the latest, right? So the best use of that money, 16K, is to dump it right into our PLOC, create a lot of space for us to make a chunk towards some debts to recapture cash flow. So the goal now is coming back to paying off debt. And I asked them, are you sure? You told me that in 2020, it's 2023. We started when I met them, we started at 253,286.39 owed. It's 2023, we now owe 273,911.34. The goal was to pay off debt. You did that during 2020, 2021, 2022, we were knocking it down. Now to their defense, they invested in real estate. So if, if you really look at it, um, in terms of the amount of debt they eliminated, 273, 911, 34, and minus the investment property that they acquired, which the mortgage now, right, not including the down payment, because that would have been a higher number. So now it's at 104, 289. So minus 104, 289. That brings it down to 169, 622, 34. And then the HELOC, majority of that 58K, was used for the down payment of the investment property, right? So I'll say minus 40. So had they not done that, we would have been from 273, we probably would have been around maybe 140, 150K owed, maybe even less because their cash flow would have been higher had we kept going the debt elimination route. And, and granted, if we didn't acquire any new debts, that's another thing, they acquired new debts, right? You can tell just by some of the balances here, like that's you know some new debts there. 
credit card debts, a loan, car note. All right, we, we actually eliminated stuff, but then put them right back on. So that's a habit. That's a, that's, that's a cultural thing that prior to meeting Denzel, that they had been operating in for however many years they've been alive or working for, right? So give yourself grace, patience, talk to Holy Spirit, talk to the Father, and, you know, get a confidant, someone you trust, to really work through this because you you might slip back to these old habits. It might happen here and there. Uh, don't beat yourself up and just give up right? If, if you invested in coaching, right? And this is, a, this is a call out to people who are working with me for free and they're not using me for free. And then people who are paying me to work with me, but you're not using me. So basically you're, you, you have resources in the world. You have access to things in the world, but you're not using it because of whatever emotional stuff is building up inside of you that you don't want to talk about or deal with. Totally get it. I get it. That's why I'm a numbers guy. That's, I, I remove the emotion. It's like boom, 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 boom. Dude, let's do the steps, right? Let's get past all that. But for some, that doesn't work. Sometimes you have to sit down and talk about your feelings, right? It works.